In this video, you will be learning the complete design and detailing of one-way reinforced concrete slab. The given scenario is shown. The left side shows the framing plan. FC prime is 5 ksi, FY 60 ksi. The floor height is 10 feet and it is a single story structure. The columns are 16 inch by 16 inch, beams are 8 by 18 inches. The center to center span is as shown. The lab load is 50 PSF. Super dead load for the finishes is 40 PSF. We have to calculate the thickness of the slab, reinforcement and the detailing. Use ACI 318 for design. Starting with checking whether this lab is one way or two way. The longer span is 44 feet and the shorter span is 20 feet. The ratio is greater than 2.2, hence it is a one way slab. Starting with E tabs, we go to new model. Then we define the grids in X and Y direction according to the given dimensions. You could have directly used one way slab option but in order to understand the procedure in detail we have to start by defining materials and section properties manually starting with defining the concrete and then the reinforcing bar change the name so that it's easy to identify the deformed bars which we defined now defining the cross sections we go to frame properties adding the concrete rectangular first the beam on the periphery that is 8 by 18 inches The depth of the beam is 18 and the width is 8. So the property modifiers to incorporate the crack moment of inertia. It's your choice whether you allow torsion in your beam or you don't allow torsion in the beam. If you don't allow torsion in the beam, then take it as 0 0.001 if you allow some torsion in the beam let's take it 0 0.1 so that the slab is not over reinforced and the beam takes torsion as well now we need to define the column section as the column was given as 16 by 16 select the material for the column property modifiers according to ACI 318 to incorporate CAC moment of inertia is 0 0.7 modifying reinforcing bars and selecting the material for the bars so that area of steel will have to be calculated on the basis of selected materials right now our concern is slab design so that does not take an important role now defining the slab material and the properties starting with slab thickness calculation since the slab is to span in one direction so let's take it one and continuous the panel thickness is comes out to be 10 inches Note that it's just the first iteration. In order to understand the difference between shell thin and membrane, you have to go to the previous video 
for the ETAP tutorial. Right now I'm assuming we have gone through that so I'm selecting shell thin. The type of the slab is not a drop, it's just a normal slab. For flat plate conservatively, we are taking the modifier as 0.25. Since it's not a flat plate but conservatively we assume. For property modifiers and cooperation. You may delete the other slab properties which are not in your use. Now we will select the prop options for automatic op meshing of the slab. The maximum size for meshing should be at least 3 feet. The lower the mesh size, the finer the meshing and more accurate will be the result. So I have selected 2. You could have gone for 3 as well. Now defining the load patterns. Live and dead are already specified. We added super dead load. Note that the dead load multiplier was 1 so that the concrete sulfate is calculated. That was the slab sulfate. Selecting the design code for the slab and checking the cover. Since I am using cover as 0.75, so it's already there. Now we will have to add the default load combinations according to the code which we have defined so etabs will automatically add the combinations based on the codes we specified add a long term deflection combination so that you can check the deflection take the live load multiplier as 1.5 and the permanent load multiplier as 3 Now starting with the modeling of the structure. We are drawing the beams right now. Make sure that the beams are correctly connected to the joints. Otherwise abnormal deflections would have occurred and the design would be inappropriate. Now we need to draw the slab. Now we need to assign the loads to the slab starting with live load that was 50 pound per square feet now go to previous selection to select the slabs again and assign the super dead load so now we are done with the load assigning part Now we need to define the diaphragm. Since diaphragm is useful in transferring the lateral forces, it was not necessary for us to assign because we don't perform the lateral analysis in the slabs usually for low rise. That's a single story structure. So the effect of earthquake will not be really high. and the structure is regular so after running the structure we need to check the deflection in the later part of the video I will be telling what is the limit of deflection and the required camber 
if you the thickness of the slab is restricted then you may provide camber so deflection due to load combinations is 0.5 around something like that and 1.3 on the first load combination on the load long term deflection so the limit of deflection is from ACI code is L by 240 conservatively which gives us 1 inches and L was the clear span or the center to center span that does not make much difference so now we are going to design the slab actually I didn't draw the design strips and clicked on design mistakenly so for one way slab the design strip is placed perpendicular to the shorter direction equal to the span length of the longer dimension that is 22 plus 22 or you can say 22 feet on both sides that makes it 62 inches 60 uh, 264 inches sorry So perpendicular to the longer span we draw the strip I'm gonna show you the strip width so that it's more clear since the main bar will come in the shorter direction perpendicular to the longer span that's why we draw the complete strip in the shorter direction now running the analysis we perform the design note that it's important to check the minimum imposed enforcement option since we draw only one direction strip for its one way so layer is available selecting the top and bottom bars as number 3 Now checking the spacing for the bars. The spacing typically should not be less than 4 or greater than 12 usually practically it's not good. So we are getting a 5 inch spacing for the main reinforcement in top. Let's check for the top again by turning off the bottom reinforcement 44 is the total span into inches is 528 divided by number of bars gives us 5 inches center to center spacing so now we will go to the AutoCAD drawing the top main bar comes in shorter direction we are providing a continuous bar since practically the contractor will provide continuous bar but you may curtail the bar at a distance L by 3 from the face of the supports according to ACI code detailing manual now we do similar procedure for the bottom main reinforcement the main reinforcement output will be taken from E tabs So the bottom main reinforcement is to be divided in the span 528 inches is the span length divided by 18 7 bars which is fair enough so now the bottom main is number 3 at 6 inches center to center actually it's a bit congested so let's drag it a bit down
now distribution reinforcement calculation is done manually effective depth of the slab was 9.25 inches the flexural percentage of steel in slabs is minimum for shrinkage that is 0.18 percent so we get the area of steel per feet as 0.2 inch square per feet that gives us number 3 at 6 inch center to center in the long direction or the distribution direction Now in the end of every structural drawing it is important to add nodes. So now we will be adding the nodes which I have already added. We will be editing them. The slab is 10 inch thick which we calculated in the earlier part of the video. The concrete cylindrical strength was given as 5 ksi which also depends on the designer or the project cost and many other factors the camber since camber is necessary as the slab exceeds the deflection limit so now we need to calculate the camber go to long term deflection limit and displacement in z direction the maximum deflection is in the mid spans that is shown in purple color so calculating the extra deflection apart from the allowable that was one inch we are getting 0.28 camber camber is calculated by cal subtracting the maximum exceeded deflection and the limit difference so let's conservatively provide half inch camber although it was required 0.28 inches thank you for watching visit the channel for much more etaps tutorials and a lot to come